let's see. Oh, here we go. Maybe I can see you guys now? I don't know. Hopefully so. If anybody's there, let me know. All right, so I'm just gonna go through routing for this four cable method. Hey, there's somebody, what's up Jorge? I guess you can see me and hear me okay? You're saying hi, so let me know if everything looks okay and sounds okay. Okay, there's, there's some more people. Cool, okay, so I think you guys are good. That's reassuring. Sorry about that, there seemed to be a delay and, okay, cool, you, you hear me and see me, excellent. Okay, so let's get back to the four cable method. That really makes me nervous when I can't tell who's tuning in and, and who's not. Um, I've got a nice little schematic here. Um, basically, what the four cable method is, for those of you who don't know, thanks, Jonathan. All good, thank you. Uh, anybody who's maybe new to Helix or new to the idea of the four cable method, um, just talk a little bit about what that is. Essentially what we mean when we say the four cable method, it's a way to route your helix through the effects loop of your actual amplifier. So, you know, if you're using a tube amp or something that has an effects loop in it, you can use a preamp block from helix routed through the effects loop of your amp and that's going to basically whatever amp you choose to use in Helix is going to become the preamp and then you're just going to use the power amp section of your tr whatever traditional amplifier um, you're using. So it's going to color your tone a lot and it can really change your sound. You know, I, I've done it with a couple of different kinds of tube amps in the past and uh, it's pretty interesting. Um, I've got some stuff dialed in. I've just been tinkering with it but um, I'm just going to throw up this little PDF real quick, like a little slide. Let's see. Yeah, just so you guys can see um, exactly what I'm talking about. This is what we mean by four cable method. So hopefully this is big enough, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to physically hop over and show you what I'm doing here in just a second. But we call it four cables. Uh, the fourth cable is actually your guitar going into your helix. And then you do the send and return uh, from your your effects loop in, in Helix into your effects loop of your amp, or your effects send and return, and then the quarter inch out using the mono side back into uh, the amplifier. So, so yeah, let's, um, I'm, and first and foremost, the simplest way to do this is right here. Let's hop over to um, our Helix editor and you guys will see uh, we've got the display here. I'm just I'm just on my desktop, so you guys can see what's going on. I'm gonna go over here and scroll down uh, in my set lists. I'm gonna go down to templates, and this just makes it so easy. There's no guesswork, right here. Two A, four cable method, and you've already got something set up. So all you have to do after this is just route the cables. Um, I don't have, this This is my Helix, my main Helix floor uh, connected to my computer so you can see the display. But this Helix, however, is not connected to my amp. Um, so let me just hop over, everybody, hopefully you see what's going on there. Let me hop over to camera three and hopefully uh, you can see, <laughs> here's, Here's what I have going here. I've got my Helix LT because it, it it wires up exactly the same. So, and I've got my cute little DT25. This is a great sounding tube amp. Um, some people would argue that maybe this isn't exactly a traditional tube amp um, because this is like a modeling tube amp that Line 6 makes, and it's really pretty cool. I've been using this a lot on some live gigs lately, just where I wanted to, I don't know, I have this and I want to use it, so I wanted to bring a tube amp, and you know, this one sounds great. So I just thought I would use this for an example. Um, pay no attention to this mic. I've been recording, whoops, sorry about that. I've got a low battery. Let's hope that this, will, this camera will stay going long enough for you to see what's going on here. 
I was just recording with this, so I, I have this mic hanging here, but you know, disregard that. It doesn't really mean anything. So let's let's grab the camera and I'm just gonna kind of like pull this camera down here so you guys can see exactly how I've got this going here. Sorry about that. Okay, so here's the LT. Now I'm gonna try to get everything really nice and neat here. But you'll notice on the back, and, and this will be the same on any Helix. Uh, on, the, on the Helix floor, you have more send and return options, but it's the same. You know, use send and return one. So you'll notice that out of my, let's look at send number one. Hopefully that's, there's enough light there for you guys to see. Send number one. back here to the back. Ooh. I don't know if I have enough room to show you guys this very well. I don't have a lot of cables going here. So from sin number one, I'm going into the input of my amplifier. Now then, over here on return number one, let's fish through all the spaghetti I have. This was really nice and neat before I started this, but not so much now. This is going to the send on the back of my amp in my effects loop. You guys see the effects loop on the back of the amp there. Now then next to it, you see the effects return. That's going to go right here, coming from the left out, uh, which is mono, into my amp. And then, of course, the fourth cable is just going from my guitar to the guitar in. So that's what we're dealing with here. So let's see if I can set this back up so it looks nice. <laughs> awesome. I thought of everything. There we go. Okay. So there it is. Back to normal there. Um, so what I'm doing, and, and I've got the template set, hopefully you guys can see on my LT here, I just have this four cable method template. That way, I actually have a button, a foot switch, going into this send and return block. So let me show you on the grid exactly what I'm talking about. Right here. Hopefully you guys can see that effects loop. And that's going it's going to automatically have the preamp block and the effects block or the effects loop on one foot switch so you can turn it on and off and it's pretty cool that way you can almost I guess sort of use your amp plus it's kinda of like having two amps in one of course when you're using a DT you have I guess many amps in one but hopefully you guys can see that Okay, so yesterday, let me grab my guitar now. Yesterday I was doing a little experimenting with this just because I thought it sounded really good. So I'm going to play a little bit and I hope that the room mic does this some justice. Let's check and see if anybody's tuning in still. Oh yeah, I still see some guys there. I don't see any comments about technical issues, so I'm just guessing everybody can still see me and hear me okay so let's see how this sounds in the room now what I did yesterday I changed up uh, the, the preset I think it was uh, set automatically to like the US double you know the fender twin US double normal what's up Matt 
Um, and so I did a little experimenting. I went to the Placator uh, Dirty, just because I was trying to get a kind of a high gain, shreddy sound, because we that's what that's what we like. And I think I changed up maybe the delay and the reverb, but I'm just gonna play a little bit. Let me turn this overdrive off, and uh, hopefully you guys can get a good idea of what we're dealing with. <laughs> preset button when you're moving your chair. Luckily I saved that preset so I still have it. Uh, I'm going to turn this up just a little bit more. I don't know how... Hello from Tahiti. Is that right? Hello. Hello Tahiti. Thanks for watching. Um, crank this up a little more. I, I hope this uh, my microphone is picking up the sound. Usually I would go direct with my Helix, but because of what I'm talking about, I wanted to get the room sound so you guys could actually hear the tube amp. There could have been a better way to do this, but I, I'm just, to me this was, um, there was a lot of room for interpretation with this particular stream since we're talking about the four cable method. So here's the placator dirty. And I've got, uh, I've got a coil tap going right now so uh, I actually am on a single coil sound but sounds pretty righteous <laughs> What's up, Nick? A little bit darker sound. Oh, and if you guys, anybody out there is using a DT, you know, you have a lot of different options with this. The way I have the DT set right now is on the setting number one. So that essentially is going to be modeling more of a Fender-ish um, amp sound, uh, the way the tubes and everything uh, will configure. I just thought that was a nice generic place to start with this, so you know that's that's what I have. And then I actually put it on, set it to the pentode, which gives it a little brighter sound, um, kind of uh, you know a little bit closer to almost a class A. You know, total noob question: As someone who only runs direct, why four cable to use a tube amp for wet, dry, wet? Just trying to understand pros cons. As I'm happy with direct, but curious. Uh, well, that's a good question, Matt. I'm also happy with direct, to be honest with you. Um, just in the modern age, I feel like, you know, this kind of stuff is makes life more convenient. Sorry. Uh, just to be able to go direct into a board uh, when you're playing live, and it's consistent, unlike a, a real tube amp. You know, a tube amp can sound different from night to night. Depending on the room, you know, the the way the voltage in the building is and things like that. It, it's a really organic thing, which is also the beauty of a tube amp. So I don't think that one way is right. I, I know for me going direct is certainly easier. But yes, uh, essentially what you're saying about why doing four cable method. Because a lot of guys just are comfortable with the way the tube amp feels and sounds on stage or in their studio and this this will retain that you know you can use this digital model inside of helix you know whatever preamp you want you, i mean you know there's like a ton of amp models in here 
So it just essentially colors the amp you already have. So if you if you like your amp, <laughs> if you like your amp, you can keep it. But um, it, it'll just give you it, it'll you'll still have that tube amp feel in the room, but you have options to sound different. Just model, it, you know, it's just the world of modeling. You have all these options, so some people like to take advantage of all those options. I was pretty much not into going direct or not into doing four cable method just because of, you know, I've gotten lazy over the years uh, being able to just go direct with my Helix or, or use my power amp uh, or my power cab, I'm sorry. And, you know, the beauty of the power cab is that it uh, is solid state. And so it feels more like a real amp, but it, it's not temperamental like a tube amp. Um, and some guys just like to, you know, some, some people just like to have a tube amp. Um, well, I'm glad you love these videos. <laughs> is this patch available as I own the DT25 and Helix? Um, okay, well, first of all, uh, Richard, I'm not sure if you heard the very beginning of the video. Um, there's, you know, there's already a preset template within Helix um, that... Uh, is set up for four cable as long as your helix is somewhat up to date i mean that that's been in there for a while so it's you, you probably have it but i didn't do a lot to this i i, I was just kind of thumbing through some different amp sounds and came across this one i was looking for something like a little more high gain and so uh i came across this so it's it's available if i mean like I said, I didn't change much. I think I changed uh, the reverb. I just put like a traditional plate reverb in there. Maybe I tweaked the uh, delay a little bit. And I changed that amp. And I don't even think I changed the settings on the amp. Um, as far as my DT25, uh, right now I'm on the channel B. And I still have it kind of set from when I was playing a gig with this a few weeks ago, uh, I, I have, I always do look like a reverse scoop. So it's like a, the, the mid is up higher and the bass and treble are lower. So, you know, if you, if you look, the bass and treble are both on about nine o'clock and the mid range is at about one o'clock. Uh, I know you probably can't see that very well on the screen, but that's how it's set. The presence is at about two o'clock. I like the presence to be kind of high, but you know that to me, if I have more presence, I don't feel like I need um, I don't need a whole lot of extra gain. So that's just how this was set. And I have it set to pentode rather than the triode, uh, and I just thought you know that just had a nice snappy, responsive sound, especially with a single coil. <laughs> Really sounds good on the middle position. did change the overdrive pedal on this let's see what I put on here oh yeah I put the horizon drive on here uh, so check that out the horizon drive just sounds awesome I love the way this sounds <laughs> to the humbucker. Spice Girls if you showed up late, man. Plus, I need to learn some Spice Girls. Uh, sorry about that, brah. 
I'll learn. I'll learn something. Oh, wait a minute. What? What is that? Uh... <laughs> Is that a Spice Girls song? I don't know. Sorry. Uh, hey Lars, uh, what do you got here? Let's do a two tube amps. Theoretically, it's a nice concept, but in real life, all the digital conversion stages simply kills the benefits of tube amps. Hmm. You know, maybe, maybe it seems that way to some. I don't know. I'm. I've been having a lot of fun with this. I think this sound is great, and essentially to me the the thing about using a tube amp is just the way it it moves air it just feels different you know i feel like the, uh, it vibrates me all the way to the core um so it's nice when you can if you can get it in a convenient <laughs> setup you know uh for me like i was saying earlier it's so convenient just to go direct from a helix that a lot of times I'm probably not gonna bother with something like this although I have been using the tube amp lately I've been using this amp uh, for a like a jam like a kind of an open jam I've been doing on Sundays here uh, in Nashville and it's it's really good because it cranks and you know I bring it because I feel like a lot of the guys that show up to play are, are probably more used to just uh, playing a tube amp and I, I, I want it to be comfortable plus um, it's a tube amp is really loud <laughs> so I feel like it's better to have something that will be too loud than something that's not loud enough because I can always turn the volume down um, but um, you know I mean you're talking you know electronic engineering talk there I, I don't know all I know is how, how my ears sort of uh, interpret what's going on so for me, it, it has some advantages. It just it just has a, a different feel. A lot of guys like to feel, you know, a tube amp in the room, just blow, shaking the walls and stuff. Uh, and I might be one of those guys. But also, I like to go digital. Uh, I'll play a little bit more here. Let's see, just to kind of go through these pickup configurations. I tried to get my my studio as clean as possible. Y'all, I know there's some cables here, and there's a huge mess over here, but hopefully y'all don't see that. So uh, I'll turn this overdrive back off, and of course I can always back up on the volume and still get that, you know, the way it cleans up.
an effect to pre than post amp to demonstrate tonal change uh, when using four cable method. Um, yeah, all of the effects right now are are. Let's see, I think these are all post. Well, the overdrive, no, but um, yeah, I can. I have no idea because I'm using the template, so I don't know how much this is going to change. Usually, that'll change, you know, just how much of a of an effect you get in there. But let's just uh, let's just see for the heck of it. Let's let's take the delay and move it. It's probably going to be a lot more of the delay, but we'll see. So Jorge, hope you, hopefully you can hear that's, I didn't change the way the delay was set, I just moved it. So now you're getting a lot more delay. you would just for me that's way too much delay so I would turn all that down I'll turn that feedback down to like 20 and the mix down to 20 let's see if that helps that's still too much let's go down to 10 probably give it a little more in the mix stuff dialed in how I liked them um, but yeah there's the answer to your question obviously you can see once you move it before you do get a lot more of that effect yeah Nick um, there's benefits either way I, I th as far as either way I think uh, oh there, there's your first comment do you prefer running for cable method um, to going direct through the power amp um, let me make, let me read that again. It kind of jumped. Make sure I read that correctly. Do you prefer running four kilo method to going direct? Uh, I don't have really uh, a particular preference. Like I was saying um, earlier, I like to just show up, go direct, and hopefully have a monitor or some in ears because I just uh, at this point I've gotten spoiled off the Line Six gear because I don't have to carry heavy amps to gigs. Um, and that just is a personal preference. Some people don't mind carrying amps. And if you do, uh, I'm not going <laughs> to... I mean, I understand why someone would want to carry an amp to a gig. It sounds great. Um, so that's just a personal thing. I, personally, for me, I'm just... I don't have any roadies, so I just want to show up with my Helix backpack and my guitar. And... Uh, Although here lately I have been showing up to some gigs with this it, it just this this amp I mean it just because it pushes air and it sounds great and I've really been digging like the the Vox setting on this guy I've, I've kind of that's my my new love interest as far as amp sounds go I guess because I never played Voxes growing up or anything I was just that whole class A thing was never something I got into and now that I can flip this over and get that sound. I noticed that it really cuts through a mix uh, in a good way, so I like it. Thank you, Lars. 
uh, backing band situation. I plugged the guitar straight into the Line 6 and going direct to the board and stereo using the headphones out. Then I ran one cable from Line 6 main out into the effects return of my amp. Up. Oh. Things keep, more questions keep coming in. But, but yeah, um, my pleasure. I'm glad I could respond, Lars. Thanks for, thanks for watching. Uh, Nick, your JC is like a tank. Uh, is that your, um, your JC120? Is that what you mean? Um, because those are cool amps. I really like those. But anyway, yeah, so ho hopefully you guys, any of you that don't already know about the four cable method, um, I know that was kind of intense when I grabbed my camera and I was just like all in there, but I, I was like, well, I just want to show you guys exactly how it's routed. And just just to recap that, you can always have a look at this right here. This is kind of a way to check it. Um, this doesn't move around with a camera and look all crazy, but that's you know that's how I had that going. Although that's, that might be kind of small, it looks a lot neater on a slide <laughs> like this. So so yeah. And then, like I said, this good old four cable method template is already in your Helix. So all I did was go through here and change, you know, this this factory, uh, the way it was set from the factory, which was this, as you can see, this US Deluxe normal, which is great, but I was uh, feeling experimental, so I changed it from that over to the placator, and I thought that sounded pretty awesome. And then you've got this effects loop block already on here, and earlier, I think it was Jorge that was asking, uh, about moving effects you know around so I took the delay and I moved it like back here and that's essentially just kind of uh, you know you're doing like a virtual way of moving your effects before or after the amp and you know when you put it bef well don't put your delay before your distortion I didn't mean to do that sorry um, but when you do it like this you're gonna get more of that effect so you'll have to You'll have to adjust the parameters accordingly. I don't, personally, I, I was happy, you know, I just liked the way it sounded earlier, so. Anyway, not, not that hard to do, but a, a, a really cool option. And if anybody saw uh, the, the video I posted just when I was advertising, doing this live stream today, uh, I just hung that mic in front of everything and recorded it. Uh, onto my little zoom recorder and sounded sounded killer this this amp sounds pretty killer just by itself but being able to you know mm, uh, to have a the option to just change that preamp up so much and get any kind of sound you want is really fun so hopefully that's eye-opening for some of you and for some of you I'm sure you already know about the four cable method but I think it's pretty cool um, I don't. I'm not sure about that, Matt. Send me an email. Hit me up, or or on Facebook or something like that. Um, but anyway, yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for the four cable method. So I appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, thanks for putting up with my crazy camera work. But hopefully that was intense and it kept your attention. So anyway, uh, I will see you guys on the next go round and uh, go. Check out the 4K method. It's a lot of fun and have fun with your Helix. And thank you all for tuning in. And uh, stick a fork in me as usual because I'm done. Oh, and one thing here. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate that. All right, guys. Y'all take care. See you next time.